Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Boston Rainbow Six Siege. Today we are busting Wind Bastion. So of course this is the test server, so anything could change. So let's start with the Kaid trick. So of course Bandit is known for the Bandit trick, which is based on listening for the thermite charge, and then as soon as he hears it, placing the battery down, electrifying the wall and destroying the charge. So let's watch both of these guys put out their devices and see what kind of delay there is. In the reveal, they made it seem like it was a long delay, but here they are both activating at the same time and Bandit's electrified. And about a second later is Kaid. If we watch it back in slow motion, you can see Kaid can get his device out quicker and of course from range as well, but Bandit electrifies about a second quicker. So let's actually do this real. We're gonna listen for the thermite charge, throw out the device, and try to take that charge out before Thermite can detonate it. So as you can see, the sparks get all the way to the bottom, but we did manage to stop it just. Now, if you're just a second or even a few milliseconds in delay in this, then Thermite can get through. So you definitely can do it, but you are losing a, about a full second of time to do this. So it's definitely harder, but it's certainly confirmed. And especially if you have a Valt cam up, or something like that that can give you some intel, then it's even better. Knocking back through a deployable shield. So of course, Nomad's brand new gadget, the air jab, doesn't do any physical damage to the player or the environment, but it causes players' characters to go flying, and they will go through things like deployable shields. So as you can see there, completely wrecked it. And of course, you can also send people through like destructible walls. So that's certainly confirmed. Knock back through a player. So in this instance, we've got a soft wall and right behind that is Sledge. And as you can see, we went right through Sledge without doing any damage to either of us. And as you can see, Sledge was not affected by the knockback as well because he was behind that surface. So that's confirmed, no damage. So knock back through a roof hatch. So we attempted to get this to detonate above us so that it would potentially force us down but it always seems to push players out sideways and not downwards. So you can't go th down through a hatch, which would be pretty funny if you could do it, but that is busted. Monty is immune to the knockback effect of Nomad. So of course he can extend his shield. Now when it comes to Clash, she actually puts her shield away, but with Montang he gets pushed back. He does get pushed out of the extended phase, but his shield remains in front of him, which is quite good and uh, it's relatively balanced I think. I think the fact that Clash puts it on her back is a bit of a real terrible thing. Nomad is such a hard counter for her, but when it comes to the friendly shields of Nomad, they do put their shield out to the side when they get knocked back, but it's certainly not as vulnerable as it is for Clash. Rook armor helps to protect you from knockbacks. So I was curious if Rook armor might help you get up faster, like if it kind of protects you from the shock and you can recover quicker. So here's an example of Maverick and Rook. Now I was also wanting to test different armor values as well, like the quicker operators could get up faster, but it does seem like they both get up at the same time. And there might be a little bit of server delay, but it looked like it was pretty much the same. And Grief Drums on his side confirmed that they looked to be exactly the same time. So now Maverick has picked up some Rook armor. Looks like they recover exactly the same time. So that is busted. You can peek and destroy an air jab without setting it off. Now the air jab doesn't give off any kind of noise, which it probably should, really. And it doesn't really give off any visuals like the lasers of a claymore. But if you know where it is, if you know that Nomad just set it out, then you know it's on like at least a surface of a wall. You can peek it and try and destroy it. So this is an example here, it's on a deployable cover. This also shows that it does need line of sight in order to detonate. And as you can see, it's definitely not detonating. I'm going to peek it and peek it until I can find it and destroy it. We can see it right there, a little yellow light. And I can peek it and destroy it. Now we'll actually go and we'll do this again, but this time I'm going to peek it until it goes off to show you how far out you can actually peek before it detonates. So it's pretty reasonable. If you know it's on a surface, it's certainly doable to peek it and shoot it. And if you do that with like a silenced pistol or something, Nomad's not gonna know you're coming, which is really good. So that is confirmed. The Lord is immune to the air jab while on the turret. So of course, if the air jab was able to knock you off of the turret, that would suck. 
for one of the weakest top players in the game. But here's an air jab versus turret. All it does is shake it a little bit and Chanka just stays there. It's pretty impressive. So that is confirmed. Now, what if you're not on the turret, but the air jab gets fired at you and then you go flying towards the turret? So here I am right in front of the turret. The air jab is going to get shot at me and I fly through the turret and destroy it. So the turret has been completely decimated by just, just a player character flying through it. And that is confirmed. So no more turret. The new Maverick trick still works. So this is crazy because I tested this when it launched and it didn't work. And then later in a patch, this was just added in. And I'm amazed this works for Maverick. Like all those anchor points in that reinforced wall. And I always thought when I made that video that damn, this is going to be irrelevant soon because they're going to patch it out because it just seems totally crazy. But they haven't which might mean that it's not a bug and they plan to keep it in the game. And as you can see, it just completely destroys the reinforced wall. So that's confirmed, it's still there. A player can fly over frost traps. So of course, this is a fun myth, but it also shows how the Nomad's gadget works. It doesn't elevate you up, it just pushes you back in a straight line. As we can see, Thatcher gets caught in the very first frost trap. So the characters that get knocked back by this are not being elevated, which makes sense. You're going to go back in a straight line and it hopefully means less glitches as well because you're not uh, effectively taking off and flying around. So that is busted. Air jab plus claymore. So of course you can get very creative with this device and make up traps for operators. So you can have an air jab, push an operator into a claymore. And at first, when this actually happened, it looked like I, you know, I seen the lasers and I thought, it's not going to detonate. And it did. And as you can see from the kill cam here, it definitely went off instantly. And uh, yeah, that was the end of Frost. So that's awesome, really cool, and that is definitely confirmed. Chain reaction, air jab, juggle. So that's what I've called this. This was Rob's idea, and it was like being air jabbed into an another air jab, into another air jab. Could you kind of be like pushed around the map so here it is going to go off and there's one behind the wall but it didn't do any maybe i'm out of the range possibly but i i got a touch closer it went off i went flying back another one detonates so it was right behind me but that one did not do anything so i think the animation of me getting up actually stopped the air jab from pushing me again so there's no way to chain react these and push a character around the map which you could actually potentially do if it worked because all you need to do is set up some pretty decent positions and you would totally work. The electro claw versus batteries. So this is all about whether your your banded batteries can be destroyed by the electric force of the electro claw because people asked this when it was first announced to be tested as a myth. And as you can see, it does not get damaged. Of course, other devices will be damaged and, but that's busted. The badnet battery is fine from electric effects, which it should be because it gives out electric effects. More damage from stacking electric barbed wire. So we've got Montang here who has 50 health and we have Nomad who has 100 health. What we're going to do is put Nomad on three pieces of barbed wire. We're of course going to electrify all of it with an electro claw. And if it stacks, Nomad should die three times faster and die before Montang who has 50 health. And as we see here, Montang dies. And Grief Drum confirmed that he had 50 health when Montang died. So that means that it doesn't do, it doesn't stack damage. It just does the same amount of damage as one piece of barbed wire. So don't go around stacking up your barbed wire, spread it out. Castle barricades versus a flying person. So this bulletproof barricade shouldn't break when a player is thrown into it, but it does. And I was amazed by this. I couldn't believe this actually destroyed the castle barricade. I was really surprised by that. Now this is maybe something they could tweak in the test server before it's launched, but this is what it looks like first person, whereas you get launched through the castle barricade. It's awesome. So it's confirmed it sucks for castle, but it looks amazing. It's also unlikely to happen in game, but certainly it's fun. Sending a player through a window. Now, 
what we'd found here was an internal window that we could actually get to the same height as because we already know that we don't go and fly elevated at all so getting actually pushed through a window isn't going to work if you're already lower than it so here we are and we're at the same height as this window and as you can see we do not get launched through it even though it looks from the person the player's perspective that it, we are high enough we certainly just stop as we reach that window we don't go through it uh, it would be cool like i would love to have defenders just flying out of windows and it, it, would look in, it would look insane but it's certainly not how this device works so that is busted an air jab forces you to drop gadgets you're holding so if you're holding an electro claw or if you're holding a valve cam you will actually drop them when you get knocked back it's the same for frag grenades and impact grenades so you could end up killing yourself if you get knocked back at just the wrong time by blowing yourself up so that is confirmed the highest placed electrical is still low enough for an emp so here we go right we're going to put one actually way too high it's as high as we can on this roof which will not be able to electrify this reinforced wall and that's as high as a reinforced wall goes on any map and we're now going to put one that's just in range of that wall which will electrify it and then we're going to emp it from the ground floor and as you can see, so Thatcher is an amazing counter, of course, to these devices. And with the new season, I think he's going to get picked a lot because he's just going to be so useful at taking out a ton of gadgets. Although his EMPs might not be enough to take out the amount of gadgets you're going to be up against. Air jab off skyscraper. So there's an invisible wall, so this probably isn't going to work. But Grief Rooms did want to do this and it would have been amazing if we had got launched off and fell all the way down. It would have been insane to actually see that from a first person perspective. Of course, it'd probably be quite glitchy, but certainly it's busted. And as far as I know, there's no maps you can get out of even with this air jab effect, but who knows, there might be some. Air jab onto breaching charge. So of course, this is again setting up a trap, but this time with a breaching charge, rather than a claymore which means nomad can do it all by herself because she doesn't have claymores and as you can see this works really well so you can just set up a breaching charge somewhere with your nomad device just waiting for someone to come along as soon as it detonates you detonate the breaching charge and you would get yourself a nice easy kill so that's confirmed if you pull this off it's going to be awesome so what about air jab plus lion so lion's effect is great and, it, and you know you can fire the air jab into an objective room and scatter defenders around and as you can see they do get detected just from the motion of being launched by the air jab so that could be quite a good combo and that is confirmed electrical versus drone now when i first seen a device and i thought oh this would be amazing if i could just launch it somewhere leave it on the ground and like drones get zapped by it as they come past but that's not the case even though you can see all this kind of electricity just going all over the damn thing you can just drive your drone right up to it and it's fine it doesn't get affected by it and it doesn't get destroyed by it that was surprising for me i didn't expect that i thought it would fry drones that got too close to it and it doesn't so that is busted hidden claw so this is all about how you can hide these devices so their area of effect is a sphere and not like a 2d circle so you can put them underneath, then you can put the barbed wire above, and then electrifies the barbed wire, which is awesome. But you can, of course, take that deeper, and you can make a hole in one layer of the surface and put it inside so that it becomes even more hidden. And this makes it just an incredible device. Like, this thing's smaller than a banded battery. It's more versatile than a banded battery. It can electrify more things than a banded battery. It's an incredible thing. It's an amazing gadget, and it's so fun to use. Now we did this kind of thing with the Ella mines, but of course it wasn't as practical because you need line of sight for them to detonate and things. But with this thing, it works perfect. You can electrify something and make it far harder for your claw to get destroyed. And you know, you can put this thing in furniture. You can put this thing in things that people are just not gonna look in. And you might even be able to put it places that a Twitch drone cannot get to it to shoot at. So yeah. It's awesome, such a versatile little gadget and so good to use. So that is confirmed. Air jab through multiple objects. So I'm looking forward to someone at some point in the future putting as many deployable shields together, many surfaces as possible and just launching someone through them all. 
and oh, it's so satisfying to see it's amazing that they don't take any damage from getting launched through all that stuff but that is confirmed window placement so of course this is a really good gadget for runouts and people jumping out of windows and things like that because you can really mess them up so this one for instance is actually on the wood of the window and this was grief from someone to test this so as you can see the actual device fell off the wood as i pulled it down it hit my character did five damage and then when i got outside the window it detonated and of course threw me away so that's one possible placement but we also attempted it with placing it actually on the window frame itself so you can see there it's on the window frame again we're going to do a rush out and this thing is going to detonate but the interesting thing is it waits until the animation is done for me vaulting before it goes off this is probably to reduce bugs so you don't get like pushed into windows or into walls you know and get stuck and this one is now being placed underneath the window and we're going to jump out it's going to just going to go off and send us flying so of course the air jump is really cool it's great for using it as it's been intended to and that is being a trap and really messing up people like runouts and stuff like that that could be such a big pain in the ass for you because it gives you that extra couple of seconds to defend yourself now i'm going to end this video by just saying this is on the test server as you can see here i just detonated that breaching charge on the ground but it didn't blow up uh, so all this stuff has been tested on the test server there is stuff that may not work in the future and as you can see from this boom and uh, yeah sometimes this stuff does change of course so this is all tested in prog progress but of course if anything changes i will report back and let you guys know but uh, i'm loving both these new gadgets and they're so much fun to use and uh, you guys can let me know what you think of these two devices and do you think it should be nerfed do you think it should be buffed is there something they should do or shouldn't do any of you guys thanks for watching i'll catch you next time